Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and it is time for part five of the Monday Q&A and hopefully, hopefully this one I can get through it without the phone ringing or my doorbell ringing or something else. I really messed up and waited till Monday morning to film these instead of Sunday night. So I'm going to have to deal with a lot of interruptions. It's really getting frustrating here. All right, so first question. Do you think old school bodybuilding was or wasn't as mentally detrimental as it is today in respect to eating disorders and body dysmorphia? I would say absolutely it was nowhere near as detrimental because nobody looked like a concentration camp victim. That's really the difference. Nobody was dieting down ultra ripped. They just dieted down until they looked pleasing to the eye. They looked truly aesthetic from the perspective of other people who saw that as a piece of art. Whereas in bodybuilding today has gotten to a point to where I see people do before and afters before their contest preps to where the before they look like a piece of art. They look fantastic. They look athletic, fit, lean. They have what should be for most people an ideal physique and then they diet down and they look like hammered dog shit afterwards. In my opinion at least. Just so they can have striated glutes and they look like someone who was spent three months in a concentration camp. And then that's the standard that's being set and people in this industry all strive towards that and it feeds worse into their body dysmorphia. It feeds worse into eating disorders so that they're because they're trying to obtain an aesthetic that isn't even appealing to the eye for most people and looks unhealthy and actually is unhealthy. So yeah, there's a huge difference. All right, next question. Further to my question about the difference in protein synthesis, this guy asked another question about this that I didn't do. 500 milligrams of testosterone a week versus non-enhanced. What applicable difference would you say that this makes to recommended protein intake, if any? Thanks. Guys, I've covered this before, that you don't need to change your protein intake when you're going from drug-free to using moderate amounts of drugs and possibly even high amounts of drugs. Maybe on what IFBB guys are using today, but what guys were only using 10, 15 years ago, the Dorian Yates era guys, who granted were smaller than your current pros, they were on a lot of drugs, they didn't use ultra-high protein intakes. If you go read interviews from guys during those eras, their protein intakes were less than what's being recommended to 170-pound drug-free lifters these days. And these guys were on tons of gear and massive. And no, the studies that I've seen show when we look at these studies done on healthy young men, when we give them exogenous testosterone and the dose goes up, their gains are dose dependent and predictable ratios without changing protein intake. I've never seen a study done where they actually even go to one gram per pound of body weight. They don't need to do that because the experts who are writing these programs actually know sports nutrition and they know that amount of protein isn't necessary for maximum gains even on steroids. You literally have guys gaining 20 pounds of muscle when they put them on their first course of steroids in some of these endocrinology studies while eating 100 or 120 grams of protein a day. It's not really that important because that is a high protein intake. That isn't a strength athlete's protein intake needs. So no, my protein recommendations really don't change for drug-free lifters versus moderately enhanced lifters. I just don't see the need to do so. That's my take on it. And there are a lot of top experts who coach top athletes who agree. All right, last question of the week. Thoughts on West Side for Skinny Bastards as a follow-up to your novice program. Cheers. I actually like Joe DeFranco. I like his work. I think West Side Barbell for Skinny Bastards is actually a pretty good intermediate program. So yeah, if you wanted to do that when you finish up my novice program, if you wanted to go do a split routine, which it is a four-day split, rather than continue on full body, I think the West Side Barbell for Skinny Bastards isn't a bad program. It's very viable, and if it looks interesting to you and like something you want to try afterwards, yeah, give it a try and see how it works out for you. It's, it's not a bad program at all. All right, guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it has been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time. But let me give you guys a bicep shot before I go.